Good morning. God bless you. Trying to fix this lighting, y'all. I think I'm going to have to change my seat. Bear with me for a moment. Yes, I do. I have a PayPal account. It's um, under the email address, Kingdom Works Prayer Ministries, plural, at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website and you can, um, you can reach my PayPal from there as well. There's a donate button if you'd like to donate. Through my website. My website is www.kingdomworksprayer.com. Y'all just bear with me for a moment. Amen. I'm trying to um, get some better lighting here so that I can be seen a little bit better. And that doesn't look like it's much better, but <laughs> it is going to have to do. God bless y'all this morning. Amen. God bless you. Bear with me. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm not going to be before y'all long this morning. Amen. I just wanted to um, speak some things. Amen. Over the listeners. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And um, just read a tiny piece of scripture. This morning, um, with y'all, praise God. I just felt compelled to get on for a few minutes. I don't have much battery life, amen. But I'm going to try to make the best of what I have. Amen, amen, amen. God bless. I hope you guys can see me good enough, amen. I'm trying to work this out here. To where this thing stays. Can y'all see me okay? I'm clear? Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, now if I can just get it to stay up, I'll be good. <laughs> okay, I think that's going to work. Praise God. All right, y'all. Now, the first thing that I want to do, glory to God, is I want to decree just a few things, amen, over those of you that are listening this morning. Praise God, because... God, he's just amazing, y'all. I thank him, of course, for uh, good health, strength, life this morning. Um, I uh, I have just been in a place of just observing, observing the body, observing people in general, but, but most of all, the church, the body of Christ, the building and those on the outside of um, the church. And the one thing that I'm seeing um, that we are lacking, you all, is the glory of God. Hallelujah. The glory of God. I'm going to try not to get excited, y'all, this early in the morning, but I feel God already. Hey, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. But we're missing the glory of God. Amen. And I've just been uh, reading a little bit and watching and um, Ezekiel is who keeps coming to mind. Good morning. God bless all of you that are getting on. Amen. I love you so much. Thank you for your support. Uh, you guys are awesome. Amen. Every time I get on, you jump on. Thank you. Uh, amen. Um, I, I've been looking at Ezekiel and the one thing that I've noticed with Ezekiel is that even though he was Old Testament, catch this y'all, he had the Holy Spirit. He had the Holy Spirit. Yes, glory to God. And, and, and he immediately, the Bible says every time immediately, he fell on his face. He fell in a position of humility, in a position of, of humbleness, lowness before God. It immediately says that the spirit of the Lord came in. He came in and it said that he, it, it, the spirit of the Lord carried him away. It carried him away uh, um, in the spirit and he saw visions, you all. 
He he saw things that were to come. He saw things that, uh, um, you know, needed to have prayer. He got words from the Lord in that place, amen, of humility, that place of humbleness, glory to God. And as I was looking at the scripture, I realized, I said, God, this is what we need. We need humility. We need humbleness in this day and time. We need the glory of God in our life. What is that? See, we get filled with the Holy Spirit. When we come to Christ, we ask him to come and live in us. And most of the time, he does. Amen. He honors our request when we receive um, a salvation as our portion. And uh, we have a knowing. We have a knowing that the presence of the Lord lives inside of us. Amen. He's in here. But when we talk about the glory of God, we're talking about the manifested, the revealed presence of God. The revealed presence of of God. Glory to God. We're talking about the presence of God that you can see. Um, I've had incidences sometimes where I've been in different ministries uh, and these were, this was years ago and I saw uh, uh, um, uh, one particular was a, a, a prophetic conference that I was in and I saw this man. Oh my God. He was praising God. I had just got saved y'all. He was praising God so hard in this prophetic conference that literally as he was dancing, good morning, God bless you. That literally mm -hmm. as he was dancing, he started like he started to cause this smoke. It began to come up out of the floor. Y'all, I'm not crazy. I promise I saw this. There was smoke that began to come up out of the floor as this man was dancing and praising God. And I mean, oh my God, he was so deeply consumed by the praise. Uh, I thought it was a fire in the basement. I thought it was a fire in the basement. Can y'all hear me well? I thought it was a fire. Uh, I thought it was a fire in the basement. Amen. And um, I, I started telling my mom and different people that were around me. I said, listen, I, I think there's a fire. I said, I think there's a fire. I said, look, 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 look. Can you guys see that smoke coming out of the floor? I mean, y'all, it was so much smoke that it, hallelujah. It was literally engulfing the whole church. This was a huge church. It literally was coming out of the floor where he was and engulfing the whole church. Do you hear me? And I said, my God, what is this? I'm like, I'm like, there's a fire, there's a fire. Somebody need to do something about this fire. And my mom looks at me. She had been saved for a few years. And she says, Arenda, that's not fire. She saw it. Y'all, she saw it. She said, it's not fire. She said, that's what you call the glory of God. And I'm like, the glory of God, what is that? So I had to look it up. And I, when I read about it, it was the manifested presence of God. It's the actual spirit of God, presence of God, showing himself, revealed, y'all revealed not just in us but around us in the atmosphere glory to god so today what i just want to do just for a quick moment hallelujah glory to god i just want to decree and declare in jesus name glory to god over every one of the listeners whether you're going to be in the replay whether you're going to be uh, um you know watching now live whatever it is i decree and declare in jesus name that there is a new glory that the glory of god the revealed presence of god the manifested presence of god hallelujah is falling over you now in the mighty name of jesus i decree in jesus name that you will never be the same i decree and declare that this glory of god is going to rest on us now in jesus name like never before that when people see us they're going to see the presence of god with us in Jesus name. Um, I prophesy, I speak, I decree, and I declare a greater hunger for God because in order for us to get the glory of God, we got to get in his presence. Amen. Meaning we got to get in, in the place of prayer. There's so many different ways we can get in his presence. Amen. Now, when we get in a place of prayer, when we get in a place of fasting, when we get uh, um, uh, in a place of intimacy with God in our relationship spiritually behind the scenes, then he will show up. Do y'all hear me? He will come in the room physically, in the natural, and you'll see the smoke. Glory to God. Amen. And, and then people around you will witness, my God, what manner of man is this? What manner of woman is this? They, 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 what is that? That a cloud would follow them, that the fire would show up for them, just like the children of Israel, amen, in the Bible. So I decree and declare a greater hunger. I decree and declare a fresh fire. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, falls over every viewer. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. I decree and declare and I prophesy. I speak in Jesus' name by faith. Hallelujah for every viewer that the wind of God is now beginning to blow fresh in our life. My God, that it's going to blow away foolishness. It's going to blow in, amen, intimacy. It's going to blow away the fleshly mindset, the carnal mindset, amen. Glory to God. And that it's going to blow in 
the spirit, living by the spirit, uh, applying the word every day to our lives. Glory to God. Um, being obedient. Glory to God, to the voice of God. Amen, in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare, last but not least, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, that the glory of God, amen, hallelujah, is falling. It is falling everywhere we go. The glory of God, amen, is manifesting itself in our presence and in the presence of others, amen, that they know that we truly walk with the Spirit of God, amen. Um, there, there's a scripture that I want to talk about. Y'all, this might seem like something small. It might seem like something remedial. Amen. But you got to know that this word, amen, takes on life the moment you speak it. I don't have to hoop. I don't have to holler. Amen. But the fact, hallelujah, yes, God. But the fact that I am speaking it by faith, the fact that I believe it in my heart, you understand. My confession in my mouth lines up with this. Amen. This is it on one accord. Amen. With this in this glory to God. You got to know that this word is going to come to pass for all who believe it, for all who will receive it. Amen. The glory of God is going to fall fresh on you. Hey, glory to God. I even decree and declare that a fire, this fire that hits you is going to be a fire that can't be controlled by man, a fire that can't be controlled by demonic forces, a fire that can only be controlled by the spirit of the living God. Amen. This fire, I decree and declare, is going to bring such a praise over your life. It's going to bring such a witness over your life. Glory to God that that, that you won't be able to sit still. You won't be able, my God, uh, to run without telling somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ and how wonderful he is in your life. Not only that, but I decree and declare that this fresh fire, this fresh win and this glory that is getting ready to be revealed and fall in your life amen is going to cause souls to come into the kingdom of god like never hey yes god like never before my god the anointing of god my god is going to overtake you i decree and declare it my god increase in every area of your life in jesus name as you receive this glory glory to god hallelujah god we give your name the praise now i'm going to read the scripture Amen. This is something that God, I don't know, he just brought it in my spirit this morning. It's 2 Timothy uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 3. Glory to God. I feel this. Amen. Amen to God be the glory. That means you're witnessing already that the spirit of God is going to do this for you. Amen. As I speak, I'm telling you the seed of God is being dropped into the atmosphere, into your spirit. And the angels are getting ready. The angels of the Lord are running with it right now. And they are bringing it to pass. Watch. Some of you are going to be in your bedroom and you're just going to fall to your knees because the presence of God is going to come over you so heavy. Some of you are just going to be in your bathroom. Amen. Washing. Hey, yes, God. Washing your face. Glory to God. And you're not even going to be able to pick up the rag. Amen. And turn on the water because the glory of God is going to fall on you so heavy. Some of you, you're going to be on your job, sitting at your desk cubicle and just, my God, have to get up and run to the bathroom because the holler, amen, deep down from your belly is going to spring out of you, glory to God, because the glory of God is going to hit you so heavy. In the mighty name of Jesus, my God, some of you, you'll be talking to your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, and you're just going to hit your knees, my God, or go into prayer with them in Jesus' name because the glory of God is going to hit you so hard in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that as you go up in God, as you receive this word as you begin to allow the glory of God to operate in your life, the anointing of God to destroy the yokes in your life. Your children are coming to Christ. Hallelujah. Hey, so yes, God. Your children are going to submit to God. Hallelujah. They're going to begin to follow in your footsteps in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that even as you submit to the Spirit of God as He comes into the room and overtakes you, that your business is going to flourish. I decree and declare in Jesus' name, your paperwork is going to come through. Amen. With ease, whatever it is, legal situations, whatever it is, I don't care. Because when you step into the manifested presence of God, the glory of God. You got to understand in him is everything that you need. In his presence is everything that you need. It is God himself, God almighty, the great I am. Come on, somebody. The great deliverer that steps into the room. It is the comforter that steps into the room when the glory of God enters. Amen. So you got to know that when this glory cloud comes, when he begins to come in that room, engulf you and lead you and guide you into all truth, everything that you need is coming. Everything that you need will be resolved. Amen. And the issues will be resolved. Glory to God. Hear me today. I'm telling you, just as I am speaking to you today, glory to God on this camera and I am who God says I am. The hallelujah. The glory of God. I'm trying to contain myself, y'all. The glory of God is going to hit you. The glory of God is going to overtake you. The glory of God is going to thrust you into new uh, places in the spirit of God. My God, new depths of him that you have never been in before.
for. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory to God. And I'm telling you, you're never going to be the same. You're never going to be the same as you receive this word today. Some of you, you're not even believing what I'm saying, but it doesn't matter because I spoke the word as a prophet of God. This word is going to hit you. This word is going to hit you. My God, it's going to uh, uh, engulf you and overtake you, and it's going to cause change to come in your life, and you're going to become a forerunner. You're going to become a forerunner. You're going to begin to speak the oracles of God to those who you've never spoken before. You're going to have a boldness that you've never had before. You're going to be able to run, my God, through troops, leap over walls, amen, spiritually. My God, you're going to become such a mighty warrior in the name of Jesus, my God. My God, those that are working with the enemy are going to see you and they're going to be ready to run. Why? Because the glory of God walks with you. The presence of God walks with you. Glory of God. And they're going to be able to see it. My God, hallelujah, glory to God. And they're going to be afraid of God. Not you, but they're going to be afraid of the God in you because they know that he is my God, the Alpha and the Omega, that he's the author and the finisher of our faith, that he will write the beginning, amen, and also decree and declare and cause the end to come. My God, and there's nothing that they'll be able to do about it. Hallelujah, glory to God, amen. So you guys, my God, be blessed with the glory of God upon your life now. In the mighty name of Jesus, the manifested presence like never before, amen. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, amen, uh, verse 3 is, I'm, I'm just going to touch it just a little bit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy, amen, uh, chapter 2, verse 3. Glory to God. And I'm just going to, I'm going to read from the King James Version right quick. And it says, uh, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number 4 says, no man. Uh, that warth entangle himself, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. Early this morning, about 5 a.m., God dropped the scripture in my spirit, and uh, he told me to get on Periscope. I don't know who you are, but there's somebody that needs to hear this word today. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Glory to God. God wanted me to tell somebody today that uh, in your enduring, in your, your long suffering, glory to God, amen, uh, of this hardness that's going on in your life, he wants you to know that you can, uh, you can rest in him. He wants you to know that though it seems hard, it's it's happening to you for a reason. He wants you to know that this hardness that's happening to you is producing an oil, an anointing, my God, out of you to destroy yokes. And you're going to be able to help somebody else come through the same type of situation that you are in right now if you endure it to the end. If you endure it to the end, the Bible says that the race is not given to the swift. It's not given to the one that's quick. It's not even given to the one that's strong and, and have all these muscles in the natural, amen, but it's given to the one that endures till the end. That person that holds out, glory to God, and sees the situation through, amen. So I just wanted to encourage you with that particular scripture that don't, you know, don't give up. Don't walk away. Don't turn your back, amen, on the people. Don't turn your back on God, especially, glory to God. But just know, amen, that um, this hardness is, is, is there to build fruit in you. On, on the, 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 um, the broadcast title, you saw the grape, amen, that was for the fruit of the spirit. God says to tell you that this hardness, this situation that you're going through, uh, you're to endure it as a good soldier because it's building character in you. It is, it's, it's. It's, it's frustration that will come to separate you from the things of this world and cause you to get on your face and pray, just like Ezekiel, to cause you to humble yourself before the almighty hand of God, amen, that he might exalt you in due season, glory to God, that he might bring you into a place of more than enough, amen, a place of plenty, a place of increase, a place of integrity, a place, amen, of um, uh, uh, vigor, a place of love, amen, come on, some Somebody because the greatest of everything that we ever have, the greatest of every gift we could ever have, every um, anointing we can ever have, the greatest of anything we could ever have is love. And in order to produce the love of God in us, glory to God, we got to have situations happen in our life, amen, to build the character in us, glory to God, because see... In, in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God, it's different from this world system. This world teaches, amen, through a classroom. We sit in a classroom. We sit at a desk. We have a physical teacher in front of us. And that physical teacher tells us, listen, this is uh, your textbook. You're going to read this textbook. And you're going to learn from this textbook how to do whatever it is that needs to be done. But God says in the kingdom of God, listen, I'm going to put you smack dab in the middle of a crazy situation. And I'm going to see how you 
respond to it. And then when you respond incorrectly, I'm going to show you the correct way to respond. I'm going to let you go through this obstacle. This is for somebody. I feel you. I'm going to let you go through this obstacle over and over and over again so that you get it. Amen. For yourself. Glory to God. There's just something about getting it for yourself. People can tell you all day long. They can tell us all day long. This is how it goes. This is what you should do. But guess what? You never truly get it. It doesn't stick with you until you go through it yourself. Until you yourself see that this is how I handle it. Oh, that's what this is. And this is how I come out of it. My God. And once you've got that principle down, guess what? You never have to go through that again. Amen. When it presents itself to you, the next time around, it's in a place where you're teaching about it. It's in a place where you can just quickly say, you know what, boom, I already know what to do and, and do it. And, and that's it. The trial is over because you, you passed the test. You, you got the principle. You learned. Amen. You got an A plus on your quiz. Glory to God. So God wants some of you to know today. Amen. That listen, endure the hardness as a good soldier. I know it doesn't feel good. I know you want to run. I know you want to walk away, but this is come to build character in you. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Every diverse temptation, every single tribulation that comes into your life. Why? Because I've sent it to work some patience in you. What is patience? Patience is a fruit of the spirit. It is a fruit of the spirit. He's sending it to work patience in you. He's sending it to work love in you. He's sending it to, to, to bring joy. Amen. I know it don't feel good, but we got to go through it to walk in the integrity and the fruit that God is trying to build in us. Amen. That was the first encouragement. Y'all, I'm rushing because my battery, I know is probably pretty low, but I want to make sure I get everything to you that God has for you this morning. Amen. I just want to encourage your soul. Glory to God. Now, the second scripture. Amen. I pray somebody is being blessed by this. The second scripture that he gave me is Matthew chapter 16. Um, amen. Starting at verse 22, I believe it is. Let me see. Matthew 16. Again, I'm reading from the Old Testament Bible. I love, um, I'm sorry, not Old Testament, the King James Bible. I love um, the Amplified and I love the King James uh, uh, Bible. Um, the Amplified Classic is wonderful too because it, it really explains in such plain terms or layman terms, glory to God, um, you know, uh, the word of God uh, in a place where we can understand it. And I love the King James because it's so powerful. It's full of fire. Uh, my God, it's full of, it's full of power. Amen. When you read it, it just hits your spirit and you're like, oh my God, I got to do something about this. <laughs> I want this or I got to change this. Amen. So I, I love, I love the word of God. Joe. I love it. Amen. It's such a blessing. It's been a blessing in my life and it's brought tremendous change uh, for me. Amen. So I recommend it to everybody who hears glory to God. Read the word. Amen. Hallelujah. And let it be a blessing to you. Okay. Matthew chapter 16, um, verse 20. I think I'm starting at 21. Um, and it says, um, from the time, from the, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, my God, and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. My God, Peter, y'all, he was a bold soldier. Peter was bold. He rebuked Jesus himself. My God, help us, Lord. And it says that, it says, and uh, Peter began to rebuke him saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Glory to God. Uh, verse 24, and I'm going to stop there. It says, then, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Glory to God. Now, this is what God gave me out of this. What God was telling me is to tell his people to guard their mouth, guard your emotions, and guard your heart. Guard your thinking. Guard your thinking. Glory to God. Amen. In this text, uh, the, the, uh, Jesus was talking to the disciples. He was warning them of what was to come. He was giving them a, 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 a prophecy, really, is what he was doing. He was giving them prophecy. He was telling, foretelling what was getting ready to happen. And he was trying to prepare them for what was coming. Amen. So that they would be ready. They wouldn't be stumped by what would be happening. Glory to God. Amen. Now, Peter, amen, had such a love for Jesus, y'all. He loved him. Amen. He, he didn't want him to die. I understand his heart where he was coming 
coming from. But he was speaking against the word of God. He was speaking against the prophecy. And God began to deal with me on yesterday, showing me that we do this a lot in the body of Christ. We speak against the prophecy. We speak, and I, I'm not talking about just the prophecy that comes out of the mouth of the prophet or the prophetess or the apostle or whoever, because even just, uh, you know, just anybody can prophesy because we have the Holy Ghost. That's speaking about where the spirit, amen. But, uh, um, um, what I'm talking about here is when God speaks a word, when God releases a promise, amen, and we have disbelief. We have disbelief. Peter was, he loved Jesus. And because of the love he had for him, it, it brought about a disbelief. Amen. Uh, um, because he didn't want to lose Jesus. His heart, amen, began to get in the way of what uh, Jesus was saying, the word of God that was coming forth. Amen. And we do this daily. We do this daily because God will speak a word to us. And because we might not be ready to change. We might not, um, uh, we might not want to, you know, give up something. Glory to God. Amen. We begin to, we begin to walk in doubt or disbelief we begin to walk in disbelief and we'll speak out of our mouth just like peter did no god uh-uh this can't be no god no you're not gonna die you're not gonna die but look at jesus's response to him jesus's response was what his response was satan get thee behind me come on somebody he told him he said there he said you are an offense to me you are an offense to me you're trouble to me and, and he basically told him, he said, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So what he was telling him is, listen, Peter, you don't care about the things of God. You care about the fleshly things. You care about the temporal things. That's what he was telling him. And that's what happens to a lot of us today in the body of Christ. We, we care so much about the temporal things. We don't want to lose anything. We don't want to walk away. We don't understand that to lose our life, come on somebody, in this world is gain in the spirit with Jesus Christ. Glory to God. God. Amen. Yeah. So God just wanted me to admonish the people. Listen, guard your mouth. Don't don't just say what you feel like saying. Guard your, your mind. Amen. Guard your mind before you open your mouth and allow the thoughts to come out of here. Process it. Think about what you're going to say. Examine your thought and say, is this of God? Is this of God? Because this is God speaking. How dare I speak against what God said? If God said it, that means he already knows my heart. He already knows that what's coming after this, my ladder is going to be greater. He knows that if I give this up, that what I'm going to receive from him is going to be greater than what I'm giving up. He knows that. He knows it's going to be greater than what I'm giving up. Glory to God. Amen. The enemy doesn't want some of you to hear this word because it's for you. But I decree and declare in Jesus' name that you're going to get this word. You're going to get it all, even if you have to go back and watch the replay in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So so guard your thinking. Amen. Because what, what's here comes out of here. Glory to God. What goes in here, what goes in here comes out of here. Amen. It comes out of here. Glory to God. What we take in here, these are gates. Amen. These are what we call gates. What we take in here. Amen. It Come on, somebody. It comes out of here. It comes out out of here so we have to be careful what we take in and we have to be careful how we allow it to come out even if we take it in we have to be careful how we allow it to come out peter did not think before he spoke peter was in his emotions he was in his feelings glory to god and he spoke a word that was contrary to the word of god amen and this is what happens when we when we operate in our emotions like this we don't uh, um think about what we think before we release it Amen. Out of our gates. Glory to God. What happens is doubt will come in. And if it doesn't come in our hearts, we will, we will, we will release doubt to the people that hear it. Because somebody, somebody, let's say we have a room full of people. The word of God is going forth. And, and I say to you, my God, the glory of God is getting ready to hit you. My God, like never before. Hallelujah. And, and somebody in the room um, is struggling with their prayer life. They're struggling with their prayer life. They want to pray. They, my God, they want to be able to concentrate and go in and have intimacy with God. But, but because they don't, they're in their feelings. They're in their emotions. And they come out of their mouth and they say, well, that sounds good. You know, the glory of God is going to come, um, you know, but I wonder when. You know, I wonder when because I've been praying, but I just haven't, you know, quite been able to get in a place where I need to be. Or they may not even say that. But the fact that they release, okay, uh, you know, okay, it's going to come. But when, that, the, it, it's doubt. When it, hit the he, the, when it hits the ears of the hearer, you understand, outside of that person who has no understanding of what their personal uh, situation is, that immediately it's going to make them question, well, maybe, maybe it won't come. Because 
that person, you understand, is not fully receiving it at that moment. It, yes, exactly. That is my point. Exactly. That when, when we speak like that, it negates the word of God. Um, or or some people, classic incident, some people, they'll say, um, okay, the glory of God is coming, but. The glory of God is coming, but. Listen, that word, but, is a conjunction word. It, everything that comes before the word, but, when you speak, but, can, it cancels it out. It literally says, everything you said before, but, means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Literally. So we have to be careful what we say. It, listen, when God speaks the word, if there's any doubt or any question in your heart, be silent about it. Don't say anything. And in your mind, begin to pray. Begin to pray, God, help my doubt and unbelief. God, show me this thing within myself or show me um, what I need to work on to get in a place where I can receive this. Amen. And, and speak. Listen, because what, doubt is not of God. Doubt is doubt comes straight from the enemy. The lie is a lie of the enemy. And we know the Bible says that Satan is the father of all lies. Amen. He speaks contrary. The Bible tells us that um, the flesh um, uh, in Galatians, I believe it is chapter five, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the flesh and the spirit is at constant war. It's a constant war. The flesh is always speaking something different, opposite of what the spirit of God is speaking. Amen. So whenever doubt comes, you know, that is the enemy, you know, it's your flesh. And this is what you can do. Cast it down. The word of God says, cast down every what vain imagination that vain. It, it, it means basically that, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It's worthless. It's useless. Doubt is useless. Faith my God is worth a, a million dollars, if not more, because your faith can produce something that you have not seen, something that 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 that, that um, was not um, um, visible or living in times past. Amen. But doubt, doubt cancels things out. Doubt destroys things. Doubt causes things to 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 dissipate, to disappear. Amen. To be diminished. Glory to God. When you think about it. Amen. Um, so when doubt comes, you want to cast down that vain imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Amen. And you want to bring it into the captivity. Amen. Bondage of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you do that? By casting it down. You say you say no. You reject it. No, the devil is a liar. I don't believe that. I, I believe in Jesus name that I'm going to receive the glory of God. And you begin to speak it by faith. I receive the glory of God. Amen. By faith, the, the, the glory of God now walks with me. You begin to put your faith into action by speaking the word of God. Amen. Over you. Glory to God. The word of God is life. It says the power of the, the, the power of life and death lies in the tongue. So amen. Uh, and it says that you shall eat the fruit thereof. Hear that. You shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever you speak out of here, come on somebody, you're going to receive it. You're going to eat it. Amen. You're going to partake of it. Intake. Amen. What you speak. Glory to God. You're going to become that thing. Amen. According to the word of God. So you don't want to allow, amen, the doubt to come out. So guard your mouth, guard your heart, guard your thought process. Amen. And guard what you allow to come inside of you. Amen. Glory to God. Like the Bible says, it's not what goes in a man that defiles him, but it's what comes out. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that, 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 um, um, Amen. Is what I wanted to get to you today to guard your heart, guard your mouth, guard, guard your gates. Amen. Um, don't speak out of your emotion. Do not release a word out of your emotion. And when I say release a word, I'm talking about any word. I'm not saying prophecy. I'm talking about it could be it could be the word um, different. For instance, it, it, it could be, it could be the word different. Amen. Um, um, before you speak out of your mouth, think about what you're going to say. Think about, is it going to be edifying? Think about, is it going to build up the character of a person? Amen. Think about, is it going to help them come out of their situation? Think about, is it going to build you up? Because the enemy is into, especially nowadays, he's into um, um, either self-gratification or um, self-deprivation. So either he has us doing too much for self or too little for self. Amen. Um, trying, to, trying to kill us off. Amen. Trying to make us uh, speak ill will against ourself, negative against ourself. He's not really using as much as he used to people on the outside to attack us anymore, but he's killing, stealing, and destroying through, um, uh, using us ourselves against us. You understand? So glory to God. We, we have to 
You know what I'm saying? So we have to, amen, get in a place where we don't allow the enemy to make us speak negativity out of our mouth against ourselves. Because all it is is a death sentence. Come on, somebody. It's a death sentence. When you speak, come on, the power of life and death is in your what? Tongue. And you shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you speak, I'm nothing, guess what? You're going to become nothing. If you, if you say, uh, you know, my marriage is not working right now, guess what? Your marriage is not going to work right now. Why? Because of what you're speaking out of, your, out of your mouth. Amen. If you see a negative situation and you speak what you see, which is negative, when the Bible says you can have whatsoever you say, then you're going to receive that negative situation instead of what you say. You got to open your mouth and speak positive. Amen. Everything that comes out of you should be positive. Everything that comes out of you should be uh, from the word of God. Even if you're not completely quoting the scripture the gist of the scripture should be coming out of your mouth amen this is the i'm telling you this thing right here y'all this thing right here man can get us in a lot of trouble or it can thrust us into some great things some great things this thing right here can get us into some uh, uh, uh some some serious trouble or it can thrust us into some really great things amen but it's all it all depends on how we use it it all depends on how we use it. Amen. He said, I've set before you, amen, today, life and death. He's given us a choice. It's, it's up to you what you choose to use it to do. It's up to you how you choose to live. It's up to you what you choose to say. Either you're going to live, come on, and speak life, or you're going to speak death and you're going to die. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Make a decision today, a conscious decision, a conscious effort day by day from this day forward, amen, to speak the truth, which is the word of God, amen, and to speak positivity over your life, over your situations and everybody connected to you, everything connected to you, amen. Make the conscious decision to guard your heart, guard your thinking, amen, and guard your mouth. Glory to God. So that Jesus, come on somebody, in the day of judgment, come on, hallelujah, when we have to stand before him, doesn't say to you, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Come on somebody. I know you cast out devils in my name. I, I, I know I know you laid hands on the sick and they were healed. But look at what you said out of your mouth. Look at how you thought. Come on. He said, he told us, come on in the word, that, that, that if a man even thinks on a woman, Come on, somebody, in a lustful way. He's already committed adultery. So it lets you know how important these thoughts are as well. Amen? Just as important as it is what we release out of our mouth. Amen? Come on, somebody. He said if, 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 if one eye, come on, is getting you in trouble, got your lust in hell on somebody, he said, pluck it out. Now, that's not talking physical, so don't nobody go trying to cut your eye out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But it's spiritually. In other words, if, if this stuff is getting in your way, then you need to do away with what's getting in your way. Glory to God. Amen. So, so it's important even for your eyesight. Amen. What you see, what you lay your eyes on is important as well. Glory to God. Because what you see, you take it into here. You take it into here. It get processed. It gets processed here, and then it goes here. You understand? Or it goes here. It's going one of the two places. It's either going here or it's going here. Amen. It doesn't stay here. Amen. It comes out in some kind of way. So we gotta be careful what we do, what we say. Amen. And how we interact, even physically. Glory to God, because what we take in here and don't release here and hold here is interacted in our physical body it can come through sickness or it can come through our physical actions come on somebody anybody who's ever been involved in lust or pornography or uh, porn amen what happens you see it it enters here it goes in here amen it's thought about here and then guess what it either comes out here through lustful speech come on somebody Physical sexual act. Oh, Jesus. Are you going there? Uh-huh. I'm going there. It can come out through physical physical act. Amen. Or lustful speech. Or it can get in here. Come on. That pornography can, can, can go here. 
amen to here. And then guess what? It's acted out in the physical body, the physical body. Amen. Why? How can you say that? Because it's going to make you want to go and do sexual acts that you have no business doing. Why? Because you saw it. It entered in your eyes. It festered in your mind and then it got into your heart. And now you want to recreate what you saw. You want to experience, come on somebody, that endorphin chemical again being produced in your mind that makes your body feel good for just a few minutes. Amen. Glory to God. And, and you want to keep going back to it over and over and over again. Why? Because you didn't think about what you did before you did it. And now that you're doing it, amen, you're getting a stronghold. Why? Because you're still not thinking about what you're doing and taking action against what you did. Jesus rebuked Peter. Jesus rebuked Peter. He let him know that what you're doing is offensive to me. He told him what he was doing was Satan. It was of the devil. It was not God. Amen. And what did that do? That shut Peter up. It stopped him. So that means we have to take an action. When we see this thing festering, come on somebody, when it gets in here and gets here, we got to stop it before it gets here. And if it manages to make it here, you got to use this right here from this right here. Come on somebody from this right here. Amen. The word of God. And guess what? You got to rebuke it, cast it down just like Jesus did Peter. That's how you stop it. Cast it down, rebuke it resist it tell the devil no i'm not going to do this anymore no i refuse come on somebody and you starve that demon you starve that demon glory to god until that bad boy leaves up out of your house come on i'm talking to somebody who is caught up in pornography i'm talking to somebody who is caught up in lust glory to god Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Come on, somebody. That's why that was pointed out in the Bible. It's so important. It's so important. We got to get away from it. We got to get away from it. How? Cast it down. The vain imagination, the useless thought, cast it down. Come on, somebody. Cast it down and then starve it by closing this. Come on, somebody. And not allowing it to get in your gates anymore. Come on, by closing this. Come on, somebody. And not allowing it to get in your ear gates anymore. Come on, somebody. By closing this. Come on. Your nose cavity. Come on, somebody. So it doesn't get it. Come on. Anybody ever been uh, um, uh, a marijuana or weed smoker before? Glory to God. Now, listen. Don't y'all answer that. Don't y'all type that now. I don't want nobody getting in trouble. We own, we own uh, a periscope. Amen. They recording it. Glory to God. Amen. But if you've ever been a smoke up before glory to god uh, um you smell you be okay until you smell it when you smell it come on it gets in your nose cavity and guess what it gets up in here hello somebody and then it gets up in here and before you know it you like oh my god oh my god i want it i gotta have some man that stuff smells so good can i can, hey can i get a puff of that can i get a hit you gonna pass the blunt come on somebody Come on, can I just be real with y'all? We need to be able to relate to this stuff, amen? Come on, pass the blunt before you know it. Glory to God, amen? Because it entered into your nose cavity and you didn't do anything when it got here. You didn't reject it, amen? When it got here, you didn't reject it. Once it's conceived in the heart, once it's conceived in the heart, glory to God, amen? Once it's conceived in the heart, now it's ready to become a physical act. Now it's ready to be released into the atmosphere. It's ready to come on, somebody. Come on. You know, once that thing is in your heart and you really like, whoo, you really want it, you're going to do what you got to do to get it. You're going to do what you got to do to get it. If it's a sexual craving, come on, somebody. Think about it. If it's a sexual craving that you have and that thing has 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 came in here, amen, or here or however it came in, amen, and it festered in here and it got here, now you're like, oh, my God, I want it. I want it. I want it. It's like a crack addict. I want it. Oh, my God. I, I, listen, y'all, when I was in the world, I used to um, count money for dope dealers, amen. Uh, um, I, I was around crackheads. I was around drug addicts with great, heavy addiction, so I know what it's like. Those cravings are so strong. They'll do anything to get it they'll commit crazy sexual acts they'll do anything to get it y'all hear what i say and some people are crazy enough to what receive them they're crazy enough to let them do it to them so that they can get their fix amen and listen and it works on both parts so that the uh, so that the addict can get their fix and so that the person receiving can get their fix amen so somewhere in there there has to be some resistance so that amen uh, um this thing does not grow it does not fester and take hold in us amen and become a physical act which creates a physical sin which brings a spiritual or physical death because we know that the bible says the wages of sin is death amen so it, so in the end that's what it produces it produces death 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 amen and we don't want death but we want life and we want to live and that more abundantly amen in the things of god well y'all i love y'all amen it's been great
Amen. Glory to God. Uh, um, I pray that y'all have been blessed by this today. I pray, amen, that you take heed to the word of God. Guard your, your ear gates, amen. Your, your gates, amen. Guard your heart. Guard your thinking. Amen. Don't be so quick to speak. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, um, also, um, you know, endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen. Know that this is working for your good. Know that it's building fruit in you, character and integrity. Amen. As you go through. Remember, don't give up too soon. Amen. But hold out. Endure till the end. Glory to God. Amen. And you will receive, glory to God, the, the, the prize. Amen. Glory to God of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love y'all so much. Amen. Um, uh, those of you, amen, that may not have heard, I am um, doing t-shirts to support me in ministry. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to put together a gathering, not a conference but a gathering, which means an assembly, amen, which the Bible told us to assemble, uh, forsake not the assembling of ourselves, amen, so I'm trying to put together an assembly for the people of God, amen, called the gathering of the glory carriers, where we can come and have no program and allow God to just move, do whatever he want prophetically, amen, through um, his servants, amen, which may be you, come on somebody, it doesn't have to be prophet and surrender, but God can use whoever he wants to do whatever he wants, if he can speak through a donkey, he can speak through you, come on somebody, hallelujah, if he can use uh, a young king, amen, hallelujah, to save a nation, glory to God, Jer uh, Jeroboam, I believe his name was, amen, I always get his name wrong, y'all, but I know who I'm talking about, amen, uh, I can't pronounce it quite uh, the right way, amen, but if he can use him to save a nation at a young age, he can use you at a young age, amen, he can use you to speak through, glory to God, hallelujah, so uh, uh, go check it out at www.booster.com forward slash war. Amen. And the t-shirt is pertaining to war and it's uh, uh, built around the scripture. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, which says the greatest of all these things, amen, is love. Glory to God. Amen. Without love, how many know we have nothing? Amen. We're just as a tinkling brass and a sounding symbol. Uh, glory to God. Amen. So y'all go check it out when you have a chance. Purchase one if you can to support uh, this, this work of the ministry. Amen. Uh, um, and again, I love you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting me. Glory to God. Uh, also, don't forget, you can support me, amen, by going to Facebook and hitting like on the Prophet of Surrender page, amen, or tuning in today at 12 noon for our noonday prayer. We do it every day from Monday to Friday as the Lord allows us to, amen. I hope to hear you all tune in. Glory to God. I love you so much. Thank you. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your day.